I'll start off here with the data frame that we just created. And the next exercise, there's a few more in here of extracting some of the data, but it's all uh, either uh, single cells, so to speak, or um, things that we've uh, done before. So I'm going to look at the ones that are more interesting. And this one is the rows that have plural pronouns in them. So the rows, and actually before I head into that, I need to figure out which rows I'm going to be accessing. So I'll use a which statement and I'm going to look at EPP again to remind myself what I'm looking at. So the plural pronouns, so I want to be able to access the third column. And as I was trying this, I actually was finding that if I did just the third, so I was accessing the third column, that it would give me the third column uh, with all the rows uh, numbered. And so it would tell me uh, sixth, seventh, and eighth rows. Or oops, if I access it and say all right all the rows that are in the third column in this way it gives me a single vector and when I use a which statement it'll still find me the indexes for those. So I can do either one of those but I'll, I'll use the second one. So I'll say in the third column, I want which of those are equal to the plural. So six, seven, and eight, that's what I expected. And I'm just gonna take this same one now that I see what it does. And those are going to be all the rows and I want all the columns. And those are all the rows with the plural pronouns and we see all the plural pronouns. So any one of these exercises that you want to try, just go ahead and pause it. Otherwise, I'm going to keep on going through. So the rows with the first and third pronouns. First and third pronouns. So I'm going to be in person. I want anywhere that these are one and three. So I'm going to do this again with a which. I find myself thinking I could probably do this easier with a subset statement. But since I'm doing a which here, I'm going to keep on doing it. So again, I'll do a column, but this time it's the second column. I want to do where it's equal to one. And I'm just going to do it again where it's equal to three. First and the six, and that looks true. So just to visually check and what I actually want to do is now say okay these are the two sets of row numbers so I'll need to put them together but I could put them into variables but since I'm already I can just copy them and then say all the columns and I see all the first and third person. So that works. And just because one of the reasons to do this is to see how it works, I'm going to subset. I'm kind of glad that it shows me there. I want to take the, the data frame EPP and I want to do it where the second column Oh, I wonder if I can do an OR statement. Let's try it. We have an extra bracket. So subset. Actually, that worked 
just as well. So that's probably quicker. And also because I'm working to see how this works. This is saying the second column. I should be able to access that with the dollar sign as well and say person and dollar sign person. And it's the same thing. Okay, it's good to see. Now the next one is continuing to work with the same data frame. And this is to first generate a vector freaks for the frequencies of which the personal pronouns in EPP occurred in the same small corpus. And then we have all the frequencies in the same order that it is in this, this small corpus. Then we'll make this a fourth column. So I don't know if it will use this as the header name like it did the others when I was creating the brand new data frame, but I'll try anyway. And I'm going to put together, actually I will leave the comma in there and then just copy each of them. Could put spaces, but it's not actually necessary. And I think this will go a little quicker. Actually working with a larger corpus, the data is going to have to come from other places. Probably more efficiently, but this gives us something to work with. So then we have There we have it, all in a vector. So I need to get this as the fourth column of EPP. So I will access, I think I could do just four, uh, but this should work as well because it's saying all the rows, the fourth column, should now become freaks. Ah, I wonder if I'm missing one since they say they're not the same length. So we have 8, 4. I'm missing this one. Oops. I'll run it again. And now it goes in there. Okay, so it gave it another name. So what I need to do is change the names of EPP just now here's where I'm not sure if the no because I don't want all the rows I just want the names of that fourth column changed to the name that I give it. Now let's look at EPP. Still did not change. Oh, I remember when I did this before, it's names of this data frame and then the fourth element. That's the best explanation that I have for it, but I think that this worked when I did it before, and it does. Okay, as we move on, the next one has us reordering uh, to look at the data in different ways. And the way that it was in the question was everything was ascending, which is pretty straightforward because then nothing has to be minus, just everything is listed out, the person, the number, and the pronoun. And then the way that the answer key was looking at it is actually descending. And I think that's a little bit more interesting. So that's the way that I'll do it here. So we want to order. Uh, I like the way that we were doing it before having an ordering index. Uh, and I like calling it index because then that reminds me that I'm looking at the index of the rows and then I still need to uh, use that as um, 
to access the rows. So the ordering index, I'm going to put in that order. And I'm going to order person, which is not a factor. Descending. Oh, actually, I think the way that he did it was this one was ascending, number was descending. Since number was a factor, it makes it a little bit more interesting to look at. Um, and then pronoun is ascending. Right off the bat, I can't think of a particular reason that I would care to see them in that order, but supposing that you do, this uh, lets me look at how to do that. So person is the first row, is ascending, the number is descending, and so here is where I'll go ahead and do this since this is how I discovered when I tried to just put negative on a factor and I got an error and you can probably already guess what the error will say. So the pronoun is ascending. Oh, interesting. It already did this. Let me look at ordering index and then EPP or ordering index. Couldn't find EPP. EPP is right there. Oh, so it was treating it like it was a function. So saying ordering index. So it didn't actually order them. I thought it gave me an error before, but it just plain didn't order them by number because it's got this down here. I'm not quite sure why it did that. Let's try it again if we do it by rank, which should make which should put this factor into numbers that it can now make descending. actually didn't. Okay, something is still not working right. Let me figure that out. Oh, I see why. That's silly. Uh, person is not actually the first row, which means all my numbers are off. That should order it by the second row and the third row and, oops, comma, the fourth row. So just to see what happens if I don't put rank on there is it says the minus is not meaningful for factors. So then running it with the rank not only works, but then it lets us order them by person ascending, number descending, and then frequencies within those categories. And then for that question, that's all there is. So the final question is going to be to save this new data with the extra column to a new file, and I'll put in my own location. So this is going, oops, right table. And I'm going to save the EPP data frame file then I will change this to be my own location, but that's a helpful start. Quant corp r, and then within output files, I gave myself a subfolder, different date, and then b should be a new name. Then the parameters, I still want quote, because I don't want quotes around the factors. I want to separate by tab delimiters. And I noticed that I left out the end of line before, 
but the default is the same thing that I would do anyway. So I could leave it out, but I'll put it in anyway just kind of to remind myself that it's there and that is what I want. And then row names is false. So something is wrong. I must have typed something. Let me figure this out. There's always something, but I think that this one is pretty minor. Okay, I copied that from up here and that wasn't needed. So now I'm just going to open it to see if it's what I expect it to be. Pull it over here and it has our extra row of frequencies. So we'll call that a close.